Hello friends, Kate here. I am bringing us another God book today, and this is a special book, which um, I was asked a question recently by a young friend of mine who is my cousin Jojo. And Jojo has been asking where God is in her storybooks. So I thought of this book. This book is called Images of God, and it's written by Marie Elaine uh, Delval and illustrated by Barbara Nes Nescambeni. And uh, this is a very cool book because it is written trying to bring together all the ways that God is described in the Bible. Um, I'll read sort of a little note when we start reading the book, and, and it's really a note for for adults, but I'm going to read it out loud because you guys can understand adult words too. So um, let's, let's check out our book and see if we might have um, new ways to look for God. Um, it's funny because God doesn't show up like uh, a character in the book often, uh, but God shows up in between and through creation. Let's see. Images of God for Young Children by Maria Lane Delval, illustrated by Barbara Nascambeni. Even though we cannot see or touch God, the Bible does describe many ways that we can still discover God in our world. This volume offers a collection of these images presented here in language that's appropriate for children while remaining faithful to the spirit of biblical texts. God is breath. God is the strong wind that shapes the earth and sea and makes the stars shine to the farthest edge of the heavens. God is the breath of all living creatures, the breeze that stirs their hearts, that refreshes their souls and renews their spirit. God is light. God is light so dazzling that our eyes cannot look at it, but the beauty of each day, the rays of the sun, the kindness and the joy that lights up a face, the hope and the happiness that brightens our days, all these reflect a little of God's light. God is night. Night can be scary sometimes because you can't see anything and because you can lose your way. Night requires you to be patient and to wait, believing that the day will always come again. God is the Word because God speaks to us. We can hear the words of love that He whispers even in the silence. Because God speaks, we are able to speak with Him. God is silence. Being quiet is necessary to understand the cries of love and of anger, the millions of questions and complaints, the secrets and prayers that rise up from the earth. God is secret. It would be wonderful to know everything about God, to discover where God is and what God looks like. We want to know everything immediately. But God remains secret for now. God has her own time. But that doesn't matter because we have our whole lives to come closer to this great secret. God is our tears. If he weren't, how would he understand our tears? How would he cry when we cry? But God has promised that one day he will wipe away all the tears from every eye and sadness will no longer exist. God is joy. All that God creates comes from this joy. The thousands of beautiful sights on the earth, the millions of living creatures, 
the great whirl of stars in the heavens, these are an echo of her laughter. And when our hearts celebrate, we share in God's laughter and joy. God is a spring. No one can live without water, and our bodies are thirsty for water. Our souls are thirsty for love and for beauty and for goodness, for justice and for truth. God is all of these things and more. He is the source of all things, and he invites us to drink from this spring. God is a rock. Rocks are hard. They are solid. They support anything that is built on them. A house, a strong castle. You can stay standing on a rock without ever fearing that you will sink down. God is a stream, like a stream that tumbles joyously down the mountain, like the blood that flows in our veins. The flood of God's love satisfies our thirst to love and to be loved. God is the root. In God, we hold the earth and touch the heavens. Through God, we draw in the sap of life so that our souls bloom with unseen light. God is wind. The wind is free. It blows where it wants. So does the Spirit of God. The wind sweeps up seeds that are waiting to sprout wherever they fall all over the earth. In the same way, God sows her word in the heart of each person. God is a path. When everything looks too difficult, when we don't know where to go anymore, when it seems we stand before a closed gate or on the bank of a river that's impossible to cross, we need to call on God to help us go forward. When we understand that his love awaits us, we won't be mistaken about the path. God is fire. When we open our hearts and our lives to God, we receive a fire that gives light and warmth, but also a fire that burns. And that can be a little scary. But God's fire doesn't destroy anything except what is bad, failed, broken, or rotten. It's a good fire with a flame that purifies us. God is a fortress. Everyone who takes shelter in God is able to resist attacks from those who do wrong and bring fear. God protects them day after day behind the fortress of her love. God is a promise. Because of this, we can be sure that life is stronger than death and that love is stronger than hate. Because God is because of God, we can believe that goodness will one day fill the earth and that there will be no longer any wickedness because he has promised this and we can help make this promise come true a little each day. God is strength. There is no love stronger than hers, no gentleness or tenderness more powerful than God's. All that God has given us forgiveness, life, joy, comes from her great strength. And yet she does so with such gentleness that no one is forced to accept. God is wisdom. Sometimes what happens on earth seems crazy. People kill, wound, and imprison other people. They destroy the animals and ruin the planet. And yet the earth and the heavens are so beautiful. People are beautiful when they work together to make a life good for one another, when they bear the image of God who created the world with his wisdom. God is deliverance. God can deliver us when we are locked up by things that keep us from being loving, 
and joyful and generous by everything that prevents us from looking at life with confidence. God is a covenant. When couples give each other rings, it's a sign that they want to be linked all the days of their lives. There's a beautiful story that tells how long ago God gave the ring of a rainbow to his beloved people, promising that she would be with them now and always. God is a mystery. God is present everywhere, and yet some say that he is not there. He reigns over the world with his love, and yet the world is full of misery. He wants us to know him, and yet he doesn't show himself. He's completely unlike us, and yet he makes us in his image. But because God is a mystery, we have to work to understand God better. God is beauty. The mountain peaks and the great depths of the sea, the light of day and the shadows of night, the marvelous birds and the fabulous fish, the multitudes of trees, of plants and of animals, all these splendors are just a tiny reflection of the perfect beauty of God. But perhaps what reflects God's beauty the best is the expression of people who love, who hope, and who work to make life beautiful. God is justice. Before judging others, we should see, know, and understand who they are and why they did or did not do something. We should walk a mile in their shoes, as the proverb says. God sees, knows, and understands much better than we do exactly who we are and why we act the way we do. God walks in our shoes every day. God is holiness. God is perfect beauty, perfect goodness, all love, all joy, all peace. God wants us to have this holiness too. God is peace. There are so many people and so many countries at war. And some even say that they fight in the name of God. God looks all over the earth for places where her peace can exist. Let's help her find these places. God is mercy. God comforts us when we are not proud of what we've done. God always looks at us with eyes full of mercy because he loves us in what we wish to be. And under that look of mercy, we become better. God is love. God is love and love is patient and considerate. It is not jealous. It is not proud. Love is not angry. It forgives everything. Love lasts forever. God is a shepherd. A shepherd always walks near her sheep to encourage them. She counts them to make sure that not a single one has strayed. She takes them to graze in the best grassy meadows so that they will have the best milk. Like a shepherd, God wants, us to, God wants to lead us where life is the best, so that we can give the best of ourselves. God is a king. God is the greatest king of all. He reigns over the world for eternity, and he is the most magnificent king, dressed in the splendor of the universe. God is also the most hidden of kings, the most secret, the most silent, God has entrusted the earth to us and asks us to reign over it with care, justice, and goodness. God is a healer. God sees what is good in us. She sees what is sick. If we ask her, she will take care of us. God helps us remove what is bad, clean what is dirty, and straighten what is twisted. As a doctor heals our bodies, God can heal our hearts. 
God is a friend. You can tell everything to a friend. You can also be silent around a friend and simply feel comfortable. A friend finds the words to comfort you when you are sad and laughs with you when you are happy. A friend listens, encourages, and understands. God is like this, like the best of friends. God is a savior. When we are about to fall or when we are sad or frightened, we need someone to take our hand to comfort us and reassure us. God wants to do that for us. Sometimes this is difficult to believe, but if there is still so much evil, death, and grief in our world, it's only because God has not had the last word yet. God is majesty. God is everywhere, and she holds all things, the earth, the heavens, and the creatures that live in them. Her glory is even grander than the heavens. When we try to imagine such greatness, it can be a little scary, but we can also just be amazed. God is smallness. We know that God is huge, and yet, he also makes himself small. He decided to live in our world, to be a baby who needs a mother, who has, learnt, who has to learn to walk and talk. God is a child that each one of us can carry in our arms. God has a face. No one has seen God, but Jesus came to us. He was born and grew up living on earth like all of us. Jesus told us that God is his Father and our Father. In Jesus, God took on a body and a face. Those who saw him and touched him have told us about him. God is a parent. A parent says to a child, Come, I will show you the world. Come, I will teach you about life. When the child is grown up, the parent says, Go on, it's up to you to make your own way. The parent watches the child leave, happy and proud to see the child walk alone, free. But the parent still loves the child, always. And God is bread. We need to eat, to live, to grow, and to be strong. Bread is a symbol of everything that gives life, of everything that nourishes the earth's people. If we do not have anything to eat, we die. God wants us to live. He's given us Jesus. And Jesus, in giving us the bread of his body, never gives us never-ending life from God. God is life. We know how seeds sprout and grow to become plants and trees. We know how a baby forms month by month in the mother's belly. But the spark of life, where does that come from? That is the great mystery. If God is the one who gives life, then God is life. God is with us. This God of words and of silence this God of light and of night, this God who is strength, beauty, peace, love, and forgiveness, this God who heals and who frees and who saves, this God is the one we call our Father. He is with us every day until the day we will be with God. The end. That book was a little bit like poetry. A lot of images and a lot of illustrations to sort of get your mind going. Thinking about the nature of God and how we, how we see and how we encounter God in our lives. You might notice that I called God a, a man in some and a woman in some. And that's because God is our parent, but God doesn't have a body like you and me. 
God doesn't come out and someone says, it's a boy or it's a girl. God is so far beyond boys and girls. He is the creator of all. And we are all made in God's image. God is a bit of a mystery, friends. The most important thing is that you keep looking. So often we'll find God in the actions of other people when they're showing love and care and service. To one another. I hope you all have a great week. Go in peace.